button away. This plant doesn't belong here. There's nothing futuristic about it. Don't forget, you can purchase tickets to our main attractions right here at the information booth. Okay, call me a snoop. Contact 4253. Hill Valley Expo, where the future is coming today. This is Checkney News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. Mr. Sagan, I didn't expect to hear from you again till after the expo. You didn't? Yes. Wasn't that part of our plan? Yes, our plan. How about that plan? I'm a little unclear on the details of our plan. Unclear? But it's your plan. I mean, I I'm worried that you're a little unclear on the details. What details? All I'm supposed to do is use my poll with Detective Parker to get Emmett's demonstration cancelled while you keep Emmett distracted. You are keeping him distracted, aren't you? Oh yes, he's a very distractible young man. Oh, that's what I keep telling everyone. There's been a change of plan. What? Yes. I've changed my mind. I think we should let Emmett go through with his demonstration. But, but you told me it could be dangerous, and that Yakov Shmirnov was a foreign agitator. That the only way I could get Emmett back would be to scoop him up after his dreams were shattered, and... and yes, and... yes, yes. I said a lot of things, but I was a little crazy at the time. The important thing is, now I think you should let Emmett go ahead with his little demonstration. Oh, I get it. What? It's Comrade Shmirnov, isn't it? He's gotten to you. No! I really want Emmett to go ahead with his demo. Don't worry, Carl. You can count on me. Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking. Wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, uh, pin what on him, exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh, 
That was the dog's fault. If he hadn't come glumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away, and I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl, is somebody with you? No, it's just you and me. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Oh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Conversation terminated. Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. Next up on our roster, a man who saw the possibilities in Pond Scum. Welcome, Ernest Philpot! Thanks, Trixie. Uh, uh, technique. I I'm truly honored to be here today among all you pointy headed type people. Like the lady said, I labor in the field of Pond Scum. Algae, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that answer. Oh, hello, Shmirnoff. Hey, Danny. Do you mind, comrade? We're busy trying to protect the expo from the likes of you. This'll only take a minute. Our plant recorder! It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Listen. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. D Detective Parker, surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? You know, one of these days I should really stop falling for that. Hey, does this mean that the barricades can come down from Emmett's booth? Let's take that as a yes. Emmett's gotta be around here somewhere. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have, and it was very... interesting. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon! Algae cake! How about an algae cake? One algae cake coming right ahead! Hey, wait a minute! It's you! Forget it, mister! No one in here. Maybe not. Not sure what that... I still can't tell what time it is, but I know it's getting late. Emmett's gonna fly his electrokinetic levitator, and he's gonna do it today. Uh-uh. I'm only giving this to Emmett.
greeting. Hi, Trixie. Now, what can I do you for? I don't think Edna's gonna be an obstacle anymore. So she was the speakeasy arsonist after all. Kid was right. I wonder if he was also right about whiskey being good for the vocal cords. I don't think so. You seen Emmett around? I'm kind of worried that he's not at his booth. Hmm, let me think. Uh, yeah. He wandered down that way a little while ago. He was talking real intense with another guy. Older guy? Looked a lot like Emmett in the face? Yeah. Uh, uncle or something? Or something. Come on, Trixie. I'm dying to know how you got the job back. You won't hear it from me. I don't talk out of turn. Thanks.